let's welcome Leonardo, who is from, uh, from Mexico. He work, works for Wolfram Abba and uh, he has been a Polish citizen in about a permanent Polish citizen for uh, at least uh, two years or something. Yeah. Yeah. Two years. Uh, the first time I met him, uh, I was astonished uh, the, about the broad stuff that he was thinking uh, with. Uh, and he, he, he's a great guy, you can, uh, can learn a lot of stuff from him. Uh, he, all, uh, he works at uh, Wolfram Alpha, so one of those. Then Mathematica. Yeah. And uh, today Leonardo is going to be talking about VCB Rack, which is a open source virtual, virtual model of synthesizer. So we are going to be talking about Alpha. So let's work on Leonardo. First, I want to apologize for the people that's going to look. Uh, the video because they are not going to be able of listening to the to the music but I, I will try to get close to the speaker and also I have a very bad uh, throat so <laughs> I may have to make some stops to to get some water so I'm Dr. Leonardo Laguna Ruiz as Rangel mentioned I work in Wolfram Research yeah uh, there is no red I don't know I'm giving some problems there, are, there is no red color. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, let's try to make. And uh, <coughs> let me try to disconnect. I have some problems with this. <coughs> so, uh, if I, if I can ask uh, the people, don't fall. So, uh, Leonardo wants to be forcing himself to speak too loud because he's got several. Well, it's good that I didn't put too many things in red, but I have a problem with the projector, so, yeah. It doesn't, uh, if, if there's another cable, we can s quickly switch it. Cable. cable, because this one doesn't fit. No. It's the only one? I have one, but it's, it's a crappy cable. I won't, I won't be able to fit it because the, the cable is on the, on the projector. Okay. So, so let's, let's go like that. Sorry. So I, I'm researcher, software developer at uh, Wolfram Research, and I, in my main job is, is making the uh, model compiler for System Modeler Simulator. I study the electrical engineering but I was doing a lot of uh, mod mathematical modeling of electrical circuits and, and simulation. So I, I continue working on, on, on that area. And this is my, my day job. And as I guess as many of you, I have a, a nice job as well. So um, uh, I'm interested in music technology. And I develop music software. And I have... Uh, I s like some, of you had, some years ago, I started developing a compiler and also uh, plugins for, for making music. And one of my, my main projects, it, it's, it's Bult. It's called Bult. And right now, it's not very well defined what it is, but I'm going to try to show you. So the topics in this talk are going to be, I'm going to show you a little bit of VCV Rack, which is this modular synthesizer. Uh, I'm going to uh, about I'm going to tell you about my my projects uh, the bull modules and the bull language and also a little bit of my ex my experiences with oh, uh, working with open source and also with open hardware <coughs> but before entering into this does anyone here has uh, makes music electronic music or is musician you have one two three that's good so i guess that <coughs> you may know what a synthesizer is and if not, I'm going to try to give a, a, a quick introduction. So you may have seen in, in, a, in concerts or in any presentations boxes like this with a keyboard and lots of controls. Uh, so that's, that's a synthesizer. And if you have here any music from the last uh, 20 years, I'm pretty sure that you have listened to the sounds of synthesizers or any other recording. Uh, 
has had already some level of, of signal processing, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be digital. So these boxes have, are even, even though they look very complicated, they are very simple. Uh, but first I'm going to show you, I want to show you how they sound. So this one, it's uh, made with only that synthesizer, which is small, and they recorded several layers. And that's the that's a kind of sound that, that, you, that you can get. Uh, some of you may recognize the song, if you have been watching the series, I love that song. <laughs> so one thing that this synthesizer has is, is that it's a small box, it's a fixed box. You have uh, what you uh, what you can uh, control in it, and and you can it's, it's very flexible. You can do a lot of sounds, but uh, <coughs> it doesn't allow you to change parts. If we try to deconstruct this uh, synthesizer, is composed out of, of small blocks that uh, are very simple. We have, for example, oscillators, which are function generators. We have uh, these blocks that generate waveforms. It can be like a triangular wave, a square wave, sine wave. And then we have other, other kinds of uh, function generators. Let's say the envelopes, which are in charge of, of shaping the amplitude of the sound or, or shaping other characteristics of the synthesizer. <coughs> then we have filters, which it's, uh, is, I mean, this is a technical university so, uh, university, so I guess that everybody has uh, here about filters. And we also have all the other blocks which are common, like sample and holds, quantizers, attenuators, amplifiers, delays. And the designer of a synthesizer, of, of one of these boxes, what, what he does is he puts things together in order to, to create uh, something that, that uh, generates the sounds. <coughs> so, but you may ask, so th this, these things are fixed. Why, why cannot be, uh, why do you have to, to stick to what you have in the box if, if all of these uh, discrete components are simple? So here, here is where uh, the concept of modular synthesizer comes. This is actually a picture of, of my own synthesizer. Uh, what, what I have here, it's uh, I have uh, small blocks, and each of these blocks uh, fulfills a, a, a function. Let's say I have oscillators, I have filters, and all, all of this speak the simplest protocol that you, that you can find, which is voltage. So all of them receive voltage between minus 10 volts and plus 10 volts. And, and you can connect them as, as you wish. Uh, you may not get any interesting sound, but if, if you practice a little bit, uh, you're going to find a, a very interesting sound. So this, this is a completely experimental platform. And <coughs> so as I mentioned, some of the advantages of this, uh, of these modular synthesizers are that you can expand it as, as you need it. If you need one more oscillator, one more effect, you just you buy it, plug it into, into, the, into your system, and you can start uh, connecting it. And another thing that, it, that gives you freedom is that you are not attached to use components from one manufacturer. So you can buy uh, from any, any company. And, and if it's this standard, you just put it in your rack and, and, and use it. And the biggest advantage for me is that uh, you can also make your own modules. So in this picture that I have, like half of the modules, are I, I made them. Some others, I, I bought them as, as kits. And you can, if you, if, if you have a soldering skill, you can solder it and, and just use it later. And yeah, as I mentioned, it, this is very extensible. And in that picture, it's not possible to see very clear. But that's, that's a wall full of, of modules. And that guy is Junkie XL, which is it's a, it's a composer. And he has been uh, composing music for many movies lately, like uh, Mad Max, Fury Road, Deadpool, Batman vs. Superman. And, and, and he, he, he has this, this kind of uh, instruments as part of, of his, of his uh, composing, uh, composing uh, technology, right? But I mean, this one, this, this thing has, it is, is very nice, but it has a small problem. 
oh, first I'm gonna show you a little bit how, how different it is to perform with a regular synthesizer with a keyboard compared to a, to a modular. That, that guy is calling vendors and he is, as you can see, he has quite a big modular synthesizer, is pre-patched and he has sequencers and everything is, is being generated. This is, is the most live that you can get with, with these instruments. And what he also does during his performances that are qu quite long, he, he changes parts he, he's, uh, as, as he feels. If he feels that the part is not working very well, he just changes the modules, connect to other, other stuff, and, and keeps uh, evolving the sound. But this thing has a disadvantage. Uh, it's if this is a screenshot that I made yesterday about some of the modules. And as you can see, these are <laughs> you, you can find modules that are quite expensive. So one of these small boxes can cost you almost 700 euros. And but you can find uh, from all prices, right? Uh, starting from 70 euros, making very basic uh, functions, up to to th uh, these 600 euros per module or bigger modules, which can cost uh, up to 4,000, 6,000 uh, dollars building one. So. <coughs> This, this kind of, of uh, technology, it's been privately, privately, I cannot speak, expensive for, for the casual user. So many people does what I do. You just go to the internet, look for diagrams, and, and start uh, trying to make your own, your own components, making it for a fraction of the cost uh, in order to, to, to grow your, your synthesizer. So but what alternatives exist for this? Uh, I mean, if, 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 you don't, if you don't have the money to, to invest in this, this kind of systems, one of those is it's an environment called Pure Data, which is an, an open source modular environment. And you basically have like lots of small boxes, small white boxes, and then controls that you can uh, move up and down. And you can connect it as, as you wish. And it's and it's also a, it's also a graphical programming environment. Uh, I actually use it a lot for not for music application but for robotics. Let's say that if, if I want to do to run uh, something on a Raspberry Pi instead of start start typing the code, this thing has a lot of built-in built-in uh, blocks. So let's say that I want to read from a serial port and then process that that data, send it. Uh, through the network with a protocol, I, j I just do it graphically. It's very convenient, and pure data runs everywhere. Uh, and but this thing has a disadvantage: is that everything is it's a it's a white box. If I show you this, it's very difficult to 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 know what's happening and what you can manipulate and what you cannot manipulate. But there are people that does uh, still quite a lot of interesting things. For example, this is a uh, an, an algorithm algorithmic uh, composition made in pure data. <laughs> so if you see this, you, know, you don't know where to start. <laughs> but, and also the person that made it, I'm not entirely sure that he can uh, change it or modify it. So on the commercial side, there are alternatives. We have Reactor, Reason, and Softube Modular. And these systems uh, try, try to, to replicate the, the same uh, interaction. You have modules you, that you can connect to each other, and, and you can manipulate, you can automate. And, uh, but these, these uh, environments are, are quite good, but they are still uh, not cheap, not expensive. It's somewhere in between. For example, I think that reactor cost ninety dollars or one hundred dollars. Reason two hundred, three hundred dollars. Soft tube, I think, is around the same. And if if you want to to use these things, you still need to to invest some money on on using them. And the biggest disadvantage that these have is that these things run on Mac computers, on, on uh, Windows computers, but you don't have uh, Linux versions of, of them. Because it, it's Linux has been 
problematic. I, I have been trying to use Linux for uh, many years in making music, but with some of my computers works fine. With others, I have lots of configuration problems. So it, uh, uh, that's the main reason why these commercial alternatives do not do not push very hard on on release their products on Linux because there there is too much variety and, and they cannot uh, give good support to all to all the users. So like one year ago or something, it, uh, it came out this alternative, which is called VCV Rack, that it's <coughs> it was developed by a, a guy called Andrew Belt, and it has, it's, it, it's the same concept, but he tries to replicate even closer the kind of synthesizers that I show you, like, like small blocks with nice cables connecting them, and uh <coughs> so, it has a good replication of, of the of the Eurorack interface. It also has a copies of real modules. So some manufacturers that that create modules for it, uh, they they gave him permission of making copies, software copies, and putting them in this in the software. So you have both alternatives. Also. Apart from being open source, uh, open source is the platform is is it's very open because uh, he has a, a nice way of letting third-party developers to create modules and integrating them in the system. So I mentioned it's multi-platform. You can run it on Linux and and it it runs perfect. You think it runs uh, the best if you have a Linux computer. Uh, it's been a year. There are more than 50 active developers more than 600 modules. They're almost a new module every day. And the Facebook group, which is where the main interaction happens right now, is like 12,000 12, persons. <coughs> so I'm going to show you, uh, this is a video from, from a musician called uh, Syndicate. And he uses VCB Rack for, for making his compositions. As you see, this, this kind of music, uh, or the, the kind of music that you do with modulars, tends to be generative. What that means is, I'm not going to enter too much in details, but it's basically, instead of you being the one pressing every button and playing, you establish that each module has uh, some rules uh, in order to produce sound. And in combination, all these rules that are a little bit chaotic or random, uh, from all these chaotic signals, you try to constrain in order to create something that uh, that produces nice music, and it does it by itself. So uh, it's, it's a kind of complicated context. It, let, let's say if if you have seen the the game Game of Life, uh, that's that's a, that's a, it is one of these systems in which you can put. Uh, you establish some rules and then you just put entities and they start evolving and changing themselves and, and they're going to continue do it, doing it. So you just establish the rules and you let some cow, some, some noisy signal do the rest of the composition for you. <laughs> so <coughs> I'm one of the developers that, that jump immediately into, into the world of VCB Rack and right now I have, I don't know, I don't even know the count, maybe 20, 25 different modules that I have been designing. So I had a lot of ideas that, that I wanted to, to make real, but uh, since the process is, is very slow, I wanted to try them first in a, in a software environment. I wanted to make a simulation of it and, and use them in this context to see how, how they feel. And 
my approach for making it that this is thing one thing that I that I think is the biggest characteristics of my models since I'm an, an electrical engineer with uh, with experience in mathematical modeling all my modules are based on on electrical circuits so what I do is I take I design something that is electrical and then I create a mathematical model of the of the electrical circuit and I try to make a, sim a simulator a very tiny s very efficient simulator that is going to execute and and is going to be producing uh, the sounds and the advantage of this is that the the kind of sounds that my models generate tend to be very analog even though they are completely digital and there there is a a charm in the in the way the the analog signals behave and i try to replicate that <coughs> so uh, i'm going to show you this if you hack you should shut down the volume mm. so i'm i'm, I'm going to show you a little bit how, how you can start making a composition with this and mainly using my models since, since they are the ones that I know the best. So first we need a, an audio interface to connect the, the audio signals. And I'm going to take an oscillator, which is, uh, let's take, as you can see there are many, many modules. I'm going to add a, an oscilloscope and this produces just a sine sine wave then i can take this signal and connect it here and you can hear it i'm going to add a mixer <coughs> let's take this one and what i can do is start uh, combining the the sounds in a in a more interesting way let's say that i want to duplicate this and i want to take the the signal out of one, connect it into the other, and, and start modulating it. So how will this sound? Let's hear. Yeah, we have that sound still, still not very musical. We can, <coughs> what I'm gonna use now, it's one of my filters. This is one of the, of the, of the filters that I made uh, by modeling the, the, analog, the analog circuits. And it's gonna connect it to the input and take one of the outputs. Still not very musical. Let's try to let's try to do it better. I'm gonna take a
mix signal. Put it here. Put it in my mixer. So I have a very simple system, which is using a, a noise source, a chaotic signal, to create these, these transitions. A lot, lot of, this of this kind of composition is done like that. You are not in control. I just set the rules, and the thing is playing by itself. Uh, I'm going to show you a, another, a more com complex example that I didn't make, but it was made by one of my friends. So this is something more complex. It uses a lot of modules. It's, it's an ambient composition. And, and everything is chaotic. I have a little bit of control on it, for example, what if I change one of the filters? Or maybe... Here you can see one of the, of the chaotic signals, how it's, how it's moving. just continues and continues and I actually like it a lot because uh, I can just play something like that and start working and it's not distracting <laughs> at all. Hmm. Going back to, so as I mentioned before, I, I actually started developing all this but three years ago I had the idea of making a compiler and uh, that helps me uh, create this kind of signal processing algorithms in an easier way. So I, I developed what was the, the boot language. And the basic idea behind the boot language it was that I wanted an easy, an easy, very simple layer on top of other programming languages. And, uh, and if I wanted at some point generating, let's say, C++, JavaScript, Lua, Java, or, or any language, and, and try to get to put the, the most of the manuals, manual optimization that I will do, I will, I will put it in the compiler. So what I get is, is very efficient C++ or C++ that, that the compiler very easily optimizes better. And yeah, I have some demos. I, I'm not going to show them now, but it's, it's possible to run it in, to run these synthesizers in the browser using the, the web audio API. As I showed you, uh, I can also take that, the same code, and put it into, into music software or experimental platforms like the like VCB Rack. And exactly the same code that, that I'm developing for the modules, I can just uh, put it into, into uh, generate C++ and, and run it in, into uh, an embedded system. So for example, this is, this is some of the, of the prototypes that I've been making. I have a, a TNC board, which is a small ARM processor. It's quite, quite fast. Uh, so I take the algorithms, or the synthesis algorithms, and I uh, generate uh, fixed point code. And, and then I have like this module. This is one of my synthesizer modules, which is it's just a generic, generic thing. I put any algorithm there, and I can, and I can integrate it with my with my hardware platform. So, I mean, so far it's, it's been quite nice, but uh, this part I, I want to talk a little bit about the, the founding, founding in the, in the, in the sense of uh, supporting open source. So you know that, that there, is, uh, there are big open source projects like Linux and, uh, and it's uh, and all the people involved in it uh, has a, a source of income. 
and that allows them to, to continue developing. But in the case of ECB Rex, it's a little bit special since, as far as I know, there is no, no company behind it. And the main developer, Andrew, he works full time on the, on the project. And he has mentioned a few times that he, he needs to eat from time to time. Uh, so in, in order to support, to support the development, uh, he has <coughs> released a few commercial plugins. And he states, he, states uh, he has stated that all the money that he receives for these specific plugins is, is used to, to, to keep developing. So right now the, the project is, is completely founded by the community. And <coughs> but uh, so at the beginning, all, all my code was open source, and I was trying trying to follow the same the same approach. But uh, there is a very one one thing that I notice is that is it's a it's a problem. It's a this a strange perception that uh, between these two things, what is value and what, and what is cost. If we talk again about uh, a big open source project like Linux, Linux uh, it's a project that has. Uh, has a lot of value, it's, it's an incredible value. But for the user, it costs nothing. It costs for someone else, right? But, uh, for, but for the user, it doesn't cost anything. But there is a lot of money uh, invested on, on it. And if we go to smaller projects, let's say I, I use Inkscape a lot. Uh, they also have some companies behind. It's, a, it's another product that has a lot of value. You can get it for no cost. <coughs> but what I have seen is that uh, they 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 are not they are not really community founded. It needs to be a, a company or some other companies investing in, in it. So at the end, very few people donate money. And, and and the strangest thing is that people tend to attach higher value to the things that have cost. If you have to pay for it, immediately say like, yeah, that may be good. Instead of yeah, take this is for free, no. Um, so, my, in my personal case, I, I have been developing lots of stuff, and and this development cost cost me money because I, I have to to buy uh, new computers to to have uh, build machines, testing, you know, to support all flat all platforms, to do the modeling. I have to to buy modules and also buy components to build things, to make the mathematical models. Uh, I, I also produce a lot of uh, videos on YouTube explaining how to use my, my modules. So uh, I have to invest on, lo there are lots of things. And the most important, I need to buy lots of kilograms of coffee to, to keep the development running. So one thing that I did, I went a little bit into the dark side. And I, I as an experiment, I said I'm gonna turn my modules that are open source, I'm gonna make them closed source. And I'm gonna make a few of the modules paid. And what happened immediately is that I started receiving donations. So when they were for free and, you, and it was completely optional, not much, I had a few donations. And when I, when I set a, a, uh, this cost, uh, <coughs> I received donations and now I'm, I'm, I, I have it even out. I'm not getting rich from this, it's still something that I, that I like to do for, for fun. <coughs> and yeah, the people just need some motivation to, to donate to, to your cause. So just as a remark, uh, for me, working in, in these old years that I have been doing open source, I, I, I have users, I have uh, like very small donations, but the one thing that I, that I learned is that this open source is not about uh, letting people read, read your code. It's, it's more about being open on the, on the things that you do and, and also the ideas. And the, and the most important thing is it's, it's being an open community in which everyone can integrate and contribute to you. So this is a, a list of the people <coughs> that I have met and all of them are developers or, or have helped me to, uh, with ideas to, to, to make my, my stuff better. And at the end, I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to give these, these things to the community. And it, it's, it's a very nice community so far, very supportive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's my email. You can ask me any questions if there. Yes? I have one question. Uh, yes. 
how how this project is uh, accepted by by the people who who actually play music, artists and music. Yes. because uh, this picture of this spaghetti wires you know, just terrifies me. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> and probably because they are not technical people, when they see something like this, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's it's been really really. Okay, yes. How, how is this accepted by the music community? Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's incredible. They, they, they just love it. Uh, I mean, last week I, I saw uh, at least three persons releasing new albums made with this. Uh, they are not uh, technical people, they are musicians. But as, as in, any, in any career that you choose, you need to, to learn your, your craft. And, and they have been learning it. And also in the Facebook community, uh, lots of new musicians that start doing uh, that start entering into this world. They ask lots of questions and, and the people that knows and also we the developers, we try to answer and, and, and try to instruct them how, how to do how to do it. Uh, yeah, th there are, it's been a great response from the, from the musicians. And are you, are you thinking about to, to change this user interface? There, there is, for instance, what comes to my mind, because I, I really like this project, is if some people have some them some fire sensors like tools, uh, metal or skin resistance, if, if somebody is make a brain more active in this, to somehow to, to give a feedback with this synthesizer on their biological factors. For instance, their yes. mood. So basically you generate music with your body. Yes, this is perfectly possible. I, I've seen some people Do you that have some, some kind of interface? Yes, it, it, it is everything enters uh, either audio or, or MIDI. Oh yes, I wrote uh, the question. <laughs> sorry. So how to how you can how you can interface this project with with other yeah. external signals like biological sensors? So let's say that, that you have a, a any kind of sensor. If you put it into a microcontroller and then you send it as audio or as MIDI. It's possible to integrate. It's very, very simple in the in the system. And to change the beat to rate or something like this. Yes. So, it, yeah. More, more technically, uh, with the if you input audio, you need to do it at 44 kilo samples minimum. But uh, MIDI messages can be kind of asynchronous, mm -hmm. so you can uh, like generate anything out of it and connect it. It's it's very, very open. And if, if, if you don't have any question, I, I can try to patch a new song as well. Okay. Yes? Is the user interface inspired by the analog synthesizer? Yes, it's completely inspired by it. That, that's the main idea that the hardware synthesizer, the software needs to look exactly as the hardware and it should have some of the limitations of the hardware. And all these wires are also. Present in the number of Sorry? Uh, are all these connections, the wires, yes. present in number of synthesizers? In modular, yes. It's like, yeah, I have my picture somewhere. It's not very easy to see, but <coughs> I have lots and lots of cables lying around. Yeah? Yes. So, uh, is there any uh, benefit of the <coughs> switching from the digital simulation uh, to the analog circuitry in regard to the quality of the sound? Yes, okay, the question is regarding the quality of the sound, analog compared to digital. One, there are benefits and advantages in both. If you do something that is uh, analog, uh, for example, th there is a component called Bactrol that is used widely in synthesizers. And every time you buy one, it's, it's completely different. <laughs> so you cannot make things that are rep uh, easy to repeat. If you, you make, make a module with one and it sounds in a way, you make, you make it in a, a new module and it sounds different. So you have that advantage that everything is very unique. On the other side, on the digital world, you have everything very repeatable. 
uh, the biggest advantage is that, that uh, you can duplicate infinitely. Uh, what's, what's the difference, let's say, in the signal to noise ratio or the quantiz quantization noise ratio, stuff like that? And if, if you use a, a high, highly enough uh, sample rate, the difference is that impossible to hear. It, working at, at 44 kilohertz, it's very hard to, to notice any low fi and, but you can easily go to, like in this case, 192 kilohertz. It's impossible to, to hear any noise. Actually, sometimes it's so clean that we insert noise in the, <laughs> in the digital. Okay. Yes? Thank you, thank you. Okay, so regarding how how the notes, uh, how what's the lack of notes in the yes. in the synthesizer, right? So, like part part of the idea is that uh, you use a voltage that can go from uh, say minus ten to ten, and the only convention is that every every volt represents a chromatic scale, so you have a an octave, and so your sound sources. Let's say that you want to play a, a specific note, C4, I think that is, that you need to, to put uh, one, uh, one, point, one volt or something, I, I don't remember exactly. If you want to, to move one semitone above, you, you input one volt plus one over 12 volt, and, that, and then you get the note. But usually to, to get, to get uh, something more precise, there are, there are quant quantizers. Like this thing, I'm gonna. I'm gonna patch something really quick. I have that oscillator for this for this little, just that that sound, and there is this component, this input here called volt per octave. So I'm gonna take one of these chaotic signals. It just goes like continuously up and down. I can put that signal into a quantizer. So the quantizer, what it does is that it rounds the voltages and then you can have this, this uh, harmonic changes. And that, that's basically the, that, that's the, only, the only convention that you have. One volt per octave, and if you follow that, <laughs> you get notes. So basically, you will uh, need this component to control the voltage. That is actually what will be controlling the notes. Yes. So in, we can end the presentation, but we have lunch now. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, but uh, if so if anyone wants to stay, I, I can patch some something else. So. And, and I can show you a little bit more of how, how to create a, uh, an algorithm with composition based on chaos. So, okay. let's take, thank you to the for the great. Thank you.